Let's just be honest, DC don't seem that committed to printing a lot of omnibuses lately, but if I could choose, these would be the 20 that I'd want the most. We're both. Hey guys, it's me Marcus aka The Mad Dog and we're back with another video. Let's just address the elephant in the room. It's been nearly a year since I did my most wanted Marvel omnibuses and I know I said it'd only be a couple of weeks until I did my DC video, but things happen and other videos take priority and I'm really bad at this job and I'm actually quite ill at the minute so I thought this would be a nice video to do. And kicking off this list in 20th place, I've got Booster Gold by Dan Jurgens. Now I'm not talking about the early 90s stuff because I was pretty happy with the standard size hardcovers, I'm talking about the stuff that came after 52. because this is one of those runs that I didn't realise went on for as long as it did. So I've only read the first two trade paperbacks of this and they did recently reprint the first one but I want to read everything of this because Booster Gold was my favourite character from 52 which is a series that I'm reading again at the moment because I've got something special planned for the season of events so make sure you're subscribed. And it's been years since I read the first part of this series and like I said I thought it got cancelled but this went pretty much all the way up to Flashpoint so there's a good 50 or so issues that they could collect in one volume. And I am all for that especially because it doesn't seem like like there's too many booster gold ones that you can go to and in all honesty the only two that I can think of were done by Dan Jurgens. Like that guy's put in some effort for booster gold. Number 19 I'm going with Martian Manhunter by John Ostrander. Yeah this does feel like a bit more of an obscure pick and I've only really read a couple of issues of this because I was doing research for me who is Martian Manhunter and I love this run but it was very difficult to get me hands on. Admittedly I'm saying this out loud but I haven't even checked if I can read this on DC Universe Infinite. Like I said I am not good at this job but from what I have read of this it was a really fun run that I I'd love to see how it panned out because he took the Martian Manhunter that I really liked from Grant Morrison's JLA run and just gave him his own series. Good job on stating the obvious there Marcus. But similar to what I just said for Booster Gold, Martian Manhunter is one of those characters that it doesn't really seem like there's a lot of go-to runs that you can read but this definitely seems to be the top of a lot of people's lists and if it does continue in the same way that it started it's something that I imagine I would thoroughly enjoy. Number 18 I'm going with Stormwatch. Now I mean the very early Stormwatch stuff, everything that's pre-authority. As far as I'm aware it was still mostly written by Warren Ellis and I know they did some standard size hardcovers of this but to me that's just not good enough. I'm a very picky customer and especially with the announcement that they're going to be doing more with the authority with the upcoming DCEU I feel like this would be a perfect omnibus to make. As well they could also include some of the new 52 stuff that was written by Paul Cox. As well they could also include some of that new 52 stuff that was written by Paul. As well they could include some of that new 52 stuff that was written by Paul Cox. As well they could include some of that new 52 stuff that was written by Paul. As well they could include some of that new 52 stuff that was written by by Paul Cornell and yeah that might just be me showing me British bias but either way this is an omnibus I'd definitely pick up it's a great sci-fi superhero story that just often gets overlooked and what better way to put the spotlight on it than giving it an omnibus number 17 I'm going with the Red Lanterns yep this is the first official new 52 pick which you shouldn't be surprised because the new 52 is my jam. The Red Lanterns is a title that I feel a lot of people would enjoy that most people just disregarded because it felt like a cheap spin-off. But there's some great character work that they did with Guy Gardner in here. There was a phenomenal battle between the Red Lanterns and the Green Lanterns and just Atrocitus and Dexter, like what more do you need? The art's also pretty decent throughout this and it would benefit from having an oversized format. And again, I might be biased, but that should be a surprise to nobody because this is my list. Number 16, a bit of a cheap pick because it's so vague, but I've just put the rest of JLA. Now yeah, myself like other people were annoyed when the JLA by Grant Morrison omnibus was announced because there were so many different missing issues to the point where I even had to do a separate video about it and because there's so much good quality stuff that's in the rest of the JLA run. But this time, ran for 125 issues and we've only got about 40 of them in the omnibus format. And you had other great writers that followed in Morrison's footsteps like Mark Wade, Chuck Austin, Joe Kelly, Jeff Johns and countless others that I've probably forgotten because there was just so many talented writers on this book. I've only been able to read the odd story or two from the latter part of this run because the trade paperback releases were just, you know, diabolical. But for a flagship DC book that ran for over a decade, I think it's so weird that they haven't paid much attention past Tower of Babel. And I think it's time that DC changes that, even if I do think they'd probably re-release the Morrison Omnibus as a volume one, and I'd probably rebuy it. Number 15, I'm going with Superman Our Worlds at War. This might be entirely nostalgia, but Ed McGuinness's art on this run is what I think of most when I think of Superman. Because there's a company in the UK called Panini and they just reprint different versions of American comics. And they did a Superman one that was just called Superman Monthly or something like that. And the first couple of issues of that that I picked up was all about Our Worlds at War. And I can't lie, I was completely confused because it was in the middle of the event, but I still enjoyed it. And now with a 
slightly more mature pair of eyes, I'd love to go back and read this full thing, but the trade paperbacks of this seem quite difficult to get. And if this was a Batman event, you know, and if this was a Batman event, you know, already, and if this was a Batman event, you know, already, and if this was a Batman event, you know, all, and if this was a Batman event, you know, already, and if this was a Batman event, I get the feeling they already, and if this was a Batman event, I get the feeling it already would have been printed. Really struggling with speaking today. Whereas the only real Superman event that's gotten a lot of attention is the death of Superman, which in case the title didn't give it away, is pretty much absent of Superman. I don't know if this is a good event overall, but I'd just love to experience it for myself. But mostly for the nostalgia, I would just love to revisit this in the omnibus format. Number 14, I'm going with Wildcats by Joe Casey. Now, disclaim it, I'm not going to be including Vertigo titles in this list because I feel like that could be a separate video, but Wildcats is this weird grey area where I feel like those stories have been folded into the main continuity a little bit better, and it's pretty much just this and Stormwatch, so I'm going to include it in this video. But Wildcats by Joe Casey is this weird series that just seems to be completely forgotten by everyone. It's only because of the fact that I had zero friends growing up and I pretty much watched every I fanboy episode religiously that I even knew that this title existed. Because Joe Casey took over the title and reinvented it as this spy espionage thriller and when I was younger I was only able to read this because I was on a dodgy website so I don't even know if I've read the full thing. But either way I think it's massively underrated, it's been years since I've gone back to this title and I'd love to do so in the best format possible. Number 13 I'm going with Aquaman by Peter David. It seems like there's a lot of great Peter David runs that haven't had a lot of attention recently. He has done a lot with the Super Family and some of the group titles, but the one that I've enjoyed the most is Aquaman. And again, because of the way that the trade paperbacks used to be released, I don't think I've read all of this. Actually, I will admit that there's not a lot of this that I've read, but especially since then, I've enjoyed a lot of Peter David's writing. I also really like Aquaman as a character, and it seems like Peter David was one of the first creators that really took him seriously. He wasn't just always the butt of the joke that could talk to fish, he really made him a badass. So yeah, I did love a lot of what Jeff Johns did with the character in the New 52, but it seems like he could only run with the character because of what Peter David did before. I know they re-released trade paperbacks of this, but I don't even know if they finished out the run, and it seems like some of them have gone out of print as well. And with it seeming that DC is dipping into its back catalogue and giving us titles like Flash by Mark Wade, why not pair it up with one of the most acclaimed runs for the King of Atlantis, who doesn't get a lot of attention, but is still one of the biggest characters in the DCEU. Number 12, I'm going with Earth 2. Yeah, another New 52 run, and this did make it quite high in the underrated New 52 titles, but I love this run. It was such a sleeper hit, and it disappoints me that more people didn't know about this. But you know, you can only take the book that you've got, and also this is one of those New 52 books that didn't feel like a New 52 book, if that makes any sense. But it was set on a completely different earth, so it did manage to stay away from a lot of the events that clogged up some of the other titles, and it's just a great retelling of the JSA story for a modern audience. They did take some liberties with certain characters, but I think they were risks that really paid off. And in the end, we just got a great, unique story that has unfortunately been quite forgotten. Number 11, and this is where the controversial picks really start, because I'm going with Batman by Tom King. Now, the reason why this is on my list is because it's controversial. I only read like the first three issues of this, and that was when I was getting out of single issues, so I didn't continue with the rest of the series. But I've heard both the love and the hate for this. And whenever that happens, I know I'm either going to really enjoy a series or I'm going to get a lot of backlash when I inevitably do a review. I think regardless of what I end up thinking about this series, it seems like Tom King really knew what he wanted to do with the character. And the relationship between him and Catwoman seems to be a really big driver for the entire series. And there were a lot of events that happened around this where Batman was at the centre, so it would be great to see exactly what was going on there. And unfortunately, Batman, for as popular as he is, is one of those characters that just seems to often gets passed about a lot. Because of everything that's happening in the wider DC universe, he doesn't get a lot of breathing room, but it seems like for better or worse, Tom King got that, and I'd just love to know what he did with that. So whatever happens, sign me up, I will buy these omnibuses, even if it means that later on after I've read them, I might end up selling them. But you know what? That's a risk that I'm willing to take. But I know they only recently finished out the deluxe editions of this series as well, which I think are starting to dry up. So if you want to pick up those books, or any others, why not use the discount codes that we've got with the channel's sponsor, Organic Price Books. They've got great packaging, fast shipping, and amazing customer services and if you use code woof woof you'll get two dollars off your order and if you're ordering three or more books and you want them to be delivered together make sure you use code woof woof ship it together for five percent off your entire order don't worry you can just copy and paste them from the description down below and you can use these codes as many times as you like number 10 i'm going with superman by jeff johns out of all of these i think this is the one that i'm most surprised hasn't already been printed i know they recently printed a last sun deluxe edition but again that's just not good enough for me i want 
everything that he did with this character. I want all the Brainiac stuff. And yeah, Jeff Johns is probably the writer that's got the most omnibuses to his name, but I still want more of them, and especially if it's going to be for this one. We need more Superman content in this format, and I remember reading some of these story arcs when I was growing up, but I never really knew how it all pieced together because the trade paperbacks would just have a different subtitle. So now that I'm older and I know that I love Jeff Johns, why not give us this? I don't even care if they double dip on Secret Origins. Just slap Jeff Johns' name and Superman on an omnibus and I am gonna buy it. Number 9, I'm going with Hitman by Garth Ennis. This is that title that I always forget is actually included within the DC Universe because I feel like it should have been a Vertigo book. But this was one of the first titles that I revisited as soon as I got DC Universe Infinite and I've got a video planned for this in the future but I'd also love to be able to do that video when they've announced that an omnibus is coming because this is an underrated series from a big name and I don't know why DC doesn't give this more attention. Preacher's great and they've done a lot of work getting that onto our shelves but Garth Ennis has done a lot of other great titles as well. The story of a rough, no morals assassin within the DC universe having to deal with all these threats coming in from superheroes and supervillains that toes the midline perfectly so that they're both pretty much always going to be against him. It was phenomenal and it had a great sense of humour as well. I never finished out this run but I did read the vast majority of it and this deserves to be in this format. I think it looked great on a shelf and I think it's criminally underrated so why doesn't DC give this some more attention? Number 8 and I'm taking a bit of a gamble here but I'm going to go with Nightwing by Tom Taylor. The the only reason I say it's a bit of a gamble is because we don't know how this run is going to end. Maybe it completely dries off a cliff. We don't know. That could happen. But so far, this is one of the best books that DC has put out in years. I've been buying the standard sized hardcovers because Dick Grayson is probably my favourite character within the DC universe. Yeah, mostly because of them cheeks. And this one isn't making it into my top five because I do feel like it's inevitable. But there's other titles that I've said that about that still haven't got this treatment. But if this does keep up the level of quality that it's been showing so far, especially with the art which is just just being great throughout, then this will definitely be one that I want to keep in my collection for years to come, and I want that to be in the omnibus format. Number 7, another quite modern one, but I'm going to go with Flash by Joshua Williamson. Again, this is one that I think I only read the first deluxe edition of, but this was great, it was vibrant, it feels like it took everything that was great about the Flash, but then added its own spin onto it. I love that it also focused a lot on the scientific element of Barry Allen's character, and sometimes Flash stories can get quite convoluted and care more about the ramifications on the wider world, we felt like this really just boiled it down to what it meant for The Flash. And again, I know this is a bit of a cop-out reason, but just the art. It's so beautiful, it's got so much energy and vibrance. It reminds me of this perfect blend of what I love of other Flash artists like Francis Manipal and Ivan Rice. And honestly, this is one of the Rebirth titles that I really want to go back and just read through completely, and I'd just love to do that with an omnibus. Number 6, I'm going with Jonah Hex slash All-Star Western. Yeah, this might sound like I'm cheating, but these two series really complement each other. I pretty much just want the entire Justin Gray, Jimmy Palmiotti run of Jonah Hex. And I do not understand why this does not exist yet. Maybe it's because that 2009 film was just so bad. It might have even been 2010, but this film was so bad, I don't even think people care about correcting me. Actually, it's YouTube. But this is another one that I've only been able to read in bits and pieces because the trade paperbacks of this were so incomplete. All Star Western was something that I have managed to read the full thing of, and combining that with the stuff that I have read from the main title, I've thoroughly enjoyed this, and I just want to read everything. I can't lie, I don't know if there's that much of a market for this title, so I would be pre-ordering it just because of, you know, the fear. Everyone in this community has experienced the fear at one point. Either way, this is just another massively underrated title for a series that went on for so long, and there were so many great artists that featured throughout this, and there was so much passion and great storytelling that went into it, and you just don't get a lot of great cowboy stories within the DC universe. We're breaking into the top five now, and let's see if I can do it before I lose my voice, because coming in fifth place, I've got Batman Murder a Fugitive. And I always forget if that's the correct way around. I was tempted to put some kind of Batman by Ed Brubaker omnibus on here, but I think it'd be better if these storylines were just separated. And I don't know about anybody else that was growing up in the UK in the early 2000s, but Batman Fugitive was that book that was just everywhere. Anytime you'd go into a Waterstones or a WH Smith, you'd always see, and it'd always be a volume one, and then you just never find the later volumes. I'm older now, I've got more money. Not by much, but you know, some. And I do like that DC is going back and collecting older Batman events like No Man's Land and the re-releasing Nightfall, but I think it'd also be great to go into some of the 2000s events that often overlooked ones, the ones that maybe you know a little bit about, but not really the full thing. So it would be great to go back and revisit this because I remember reading volume one of this because I traded it with my friend for a few volumes of Preacher, and I remember really enjoying it. It was actually one of the first Batman books 
looks like he ever jumped into, but I still don't know what happened in this. So DC, now would be the perfect time to fix that and give us an omnibus. Number four, another book that I thought I would have put high it, but it's Birds of Prey by Gail Simone. Admittedly, I wouldn't mind if they released Chuck Dixon's run as well, but at bare minimum, I'd just love to see Simone get a bit more attention. Her run on Birds of Prey is one of those that is legendary, but a lot of people have never really read the full thing. It's quite difficult as well because she left and came back and then it started again in Brightest Day, but then it stopped when it came to the Flashpoint era. So I think the easiest way to just clear up all of that confusion is giving us an omnibus. Because for me, the arcs of this that I have run is some of the best stuff that I've ever read for Oracle. And combining that with the work that was done with Huntress and Black Canary, and how it also often had this spy espionage theme, which as you might have noticed is a really easy way to get me to like your title, which meant that this was such a unique series for an era that's often overlooked and just gets labelled as either being pre-Infinite Crisis or pre-Flashpoint. Number three, again it might be a bit of a cheat, but I've got Wonder Woman by Greg Rocker, because I'm talking both his stuff in the 90s, the 2000s, and also during the Rebirth era. I want all of this in Omnibus, and I don't get why this hasn't been collected. Greg Rucker is the name that seems to be behind a lot of the great titles that were going on at DC during these times, but he doesn't seem to get a lot of the respect and the attention that he deserves, because it's just so unique in the sense that it respects all the history and the lore that's come before it, but it also just tells a great story for new readers. And then you bring that into the Rebirth era, and all of that stuff applies as well. And it's weird because when I think about Wonder Woman comics, especially the ones that I was reading growing up, I now realise that most of them were written by Greg Rucker in the first place. So I would love to be able to come back to this and read this with a fresh pair of eyes, with a more mature perspective. Again, I'm not that much more mature, but will allow it. And I think DC really needs to realise that some of the best ones that they had for their landmark characters happened during this era that they haven't printed a lot of material from. Number two, and I know a lot of people are going to be annoyed that this is placed higher than some of the other runs that are already on this list. But again, nostalgia brings a massive sway with it, so I'm going to go with Superman New Krypton. When I was growing up, this was the event that I was following. And at the same time, I did not make enough from a paper round to be able to buy every single title that was coming out. Similar to what I said for Our Worlds at War, it's so unique to be able to see Superman placed at the center of one of these big scale events. And this was something that was so personal to his character and you just constantly had the sense that something was gonna go wrong. And it then bled into War for New Krypton, which was also amazing and I'd just love to be able to revisit this. And a massive part of my childhood for me is quite opaque when I think back on it because I remember this event enough, but not thoroughly. So for me, it's in that perfect gray area that I remember enjoying it, but I don't remember all of the finer details. So to come back to this now, would hopefully mean that I'd have a great experience that would be both nostalgic, but also feel a bit like I'm discovering something. Before my number one pick that you might already be able to guess, I'm going to go through some honourable mentions. I'm going to include James Robinson's Starman because I am pretty happy with the compendiums that they've released. I love the story of this run, it's the reason why I've collected it twice, but admittedly Tony Harris's early artwork just isn't really for me, so I don't think it'd massively benefit from a bigger format. I'm also going to have Batman War Games, I don't know if this would be big enough to have its own omnibus, but there's a lot of these Batman events that happen, similar to Murder Fugitive, that I know enough about, but I've never actually been able to read for myself. So there's War Games Contagion, and there's a few others that I know that exist, and I really would like to check out, but they haven't really made them in an easily accessible format. And I'm also going to just include any Bat Family Chuck Dixon book that existed. So yeah, I'm going to include Robin, like I said, I'd also include his part of Birds of Prey. If he's the guy that did the Cassandra Kane era of Batgirl, I'd also love to see that in an omnibus as well. There was probably a hundreds title that existed along with 50,000 other Bat Family books at the time. And you know what? Chuck Dixon is a name that I trust when it comes to Batman. So if you put his name on a book, I'm gonna buy it. And my last honourable mention is gonna be the book that I'm gonna remember pretty much as soon as I click upload on this video. It happens every single time and it's something that I love and then I'm like, how did you forget this in the first place? I'm gonna include that book, whatever it ends up being, in my honourable mentions. But all of those pale in comparison to my number one pick, this should come as no surprise, especially because it was number one the last time that I did this video, three years ago, because it's none other than Chuck Dixon's run on Nightwing. Yep, like I said, Nightwing is my favourite DC character. I love the trade paperbacks that I read of this when I was first getting into comics, but similar to pretty much every series of trade paperbacks that DC was releasing during this time, they were not in order and they were not complete. So I think DC should definitely think about printing this because I in particular would love this. This is great if you know a lot about Nightwing or you know absolutely nothing about him. Yeah, sure, there's a variety of different artists, so it isn't always consistent in that front, but you know what? I will take a consistent story over that any 
day of the week and the use that Dixon put into Dick Grayson means that it deserves the best format that DC can give it. And yeah, I know that would technically be an absolute addition, but I just do not have that much money. So you know what? We have waited long enough for this and hopefully with it seeming like DC is bringing omnibuses back out again and they're also bringing out titles that people have requested for years. I'm hoping that means that this is something that will be on the horizon so that the next time that I do this video, I don't have to place this as number one yet again. But anyway, that's the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I'm sorry if it hasn't been what you expected or been a little bit different. Like I said, I am really delirious at the minute. Hopefully this is just me getting back on track. I wanted to do a feel good video where I could be positive about stuff and hopefully that's going to continue. So until next time, just make sure that you stay safe and stay mad all you dogs. We're both. See you at the next video.